A massive pocket of molten rock is drifting under the Appalachians, slowly lifting mountains that should have eroded millions of years ago. In Canada, the Tintina Fault has been silent for 12,000 years, storing enough energy to unleash a massive earthquake at any moment. And down in Southern California, a mud pot keeps inching across roads, railways, and pipelines, swallowing everything in its path. These are disturbing geological anomalies found around the world. Beneath the Appalachian Mountains, there's something scientists call the Northern Appalachian Anomaly, but most people just call it the blob. It's basically a massive pocket of super hot rock sitting about 125 miles under New England and stretching more than 200 miles across. What's weird is that there hasn't been much geological activity in the Appalachians for nearly 200 million years. So the fact that this blob is even there never really made sense. For years, scientists thought it was leftover heat from when North America split from Africa, but new research shows that's not true. Instead, it looks like the blob actually formed about 80 million years ago, when Greenland separated from North America. When continents split, the Earth's mantle pushes upward to fill the gaps, creating waves of hot rock called mantle waves. This one's been slowly drifting southwest, about 12 miles every million years. And it's still moving today. The blob might even be the reason the Appalachians are still standing tall, even after millions of years of erosion. That heat underneath can make the crust lighter and cause uplift, almost like a hot air balloon rising. And for those living in New York, prepare yourselves, because the Appalachian blob is on track to reach you in about 10 to 15 million years. Up in Canada's Yukon, there's a fault line called the Tintina Fault, and scientists think it could be a ticking time bomb. It runs for about 620 miles, stretching into Alaska. Now, it's been quiet for about 12,000 years, and that might sound reassuring, but that usually just means stress has been building up, waiting for the right moment to snap. Researchers recently focused on a 130 kilometer stretch near Dawson City, a small town of around 1,600 people. With satellite scans, LIDAR, and drones, maps, they spotted huge scars in the land that show this fault has ripped apart before. One spot showed the ground had shifted more than 3,000 feet, the sign of a long chain of powerful quakes millions of years back. Another break in the ground pointed to big earthquakes about 132,000 years ago, but for the last 12,000 years, nothing, which means all that energy has just been sitting there. The team says the fault is moving less than a millimeter a year, but over thousands of years, that adds up. If it goes, it could unleash a quake over magnitude 7.5. That's the same level as Haiti in 2010 or China's Tangshan quake in 1976. Even though the Yukon is way less populated, something that size could still rack highways, mines, and set off massive landslides. The Neeland Geyser, nicknamed the Slow One, is a mud pot in Southern California that actually moves a lot. It sits near the San Andreas Fault and has been creeping across the ground since around 2015, eating into roads, railways, and pipelines as it goes. At first, it moved about 20 feet a year, then by 2020, it was creeping 10 feet a month. People have tried everything to stop it. Engineers drilled wells to let off pressure, and they built steel walls, pumped out thousands of gallons of muddy water, and dumped rocks into the basin, but the geyser just pushes right through. In 2018, it broke through a steel wall, forming a huge sinkhole, swallowing the rocks they dumped in. It even ran into the Union Pacific Railroad, forcing crews to build temporary tracks. State Route 111 has also been in the geyser's way. Over $20 million was spent building temporary roads, drainage systems, and steel barriers to divert the mud and water. Pipelines and fiber optic lines nearby have had to be moved as well. But the slow one just keeps inching along, slowly eating away at whatever is in its path. Back in the 60s, a geologist named Jack Oliver picked up something strange on his instruments. It was a steady pulse coming from Earth every 26 seconds. It wasn't an earthquake. It was a perfectly consistent beat. More than 60 years later, scientists still don't fully know what's causing it. They've narrowed it down to one location, though, a spot in the Gulf of Guinea, off the coast of Africa, but they still don't know what's causing it. One theory is that it's the ocean. The continental shelf in that area acts kind of like a giant drum, and when waves crash against it in just the right way, it could set off a repeating vibration. But not everyone is convinced the ocean is to blame here. There's a volcano on an island right near where the pulse comes from, and some researchers think well, that's more likely the culprit. 
Tiny volcanic tremors happen in other parts of the world, like Japan, so it's not impossible that this one is volcanic too. Even with all our advanced technology though, the mystery hasn't been fully solved. Seismologists admit they tend to focus on bigger, more dangerous quakes over, you know, weird little heartbeats in the earth and fair enough. But for some reason, every 26 seconds, like clockwork, it's still there thumping away under the ocean. Over the South Atlantic Ocean, there's a weird spot in Earth's magnetic field called the South Atlantic Anomaly, or SAA, and it's getting bigger. Basically, the magnetic field there is weaker than usual, which lets more cosmic radiation sneak down toward the planet. And that might not sound all that scary, but satellites and spacecraft flying through the area can get zapped, it can cause electronics to glitch or just fail completely. Astronauts are at risk too if they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. The problem comes from Earth's core, where molten iron and nickel swirl around and generate our magnetic field. Sometimes those flows shift or slow down, and that can make weak spots like the SAA show up. One theory is that a huge chunk of rock under Africa is messing with the flow, creating this magnetic dent that's growing and moving. NASA's watching it closely because the anomaly is expanding and creeping toward other areas, and that means more satellites could be affected, which would mess with communication, GPS, and even power grids on Earth if a big solar storm hits at the wrong time. Out in the Indian Ocean, there's a strange spot called the Indian Ocean Geoid Low, or IOGL. It's basically a giant gravity hole covering about 3 million square kilometers, almost the size of India. Scientists first noticed it back in 1948 when a Dutch geophysicist measured gravity from a ship. So what do I mean by gravity hole though? Well, gravity there is weaker than usual, which means if you could somehow like smooth out the tides and currents, just make it all flat and glassy, the sea level in that specific area would actually be hundreds of feet lower than the global average. What's causing it? Well, one idea is that it has to do with plate tectonics. Millions of years ago, the land that is now India drifted away from Africa. Pieces of the old ocean floor in between sank down into the earth. Hot, lighter rock from deep inside the earth pushed up around these pieces, making that area less dense. Since lighter stuff pulls less, gravity there is weaker, which would be why this gravity hole exists. Out in the Central African Republic, right around its capital, Bangui, there's a huge, strange spot in Earth's magnetic field. See, normally Earth's magnetic field is like a smooth and visible shield surrounding the planet, protecting us from cosmic radiation. But over Bangui, this shield gets weird. The magnetic pull is weaker than it should be, and it doesn't line up like it does everywhere else. Scientists call this the Bangui Magnetic Anomaly, and it's one of the biggest and strongest weird spots in Africa. It's massive, about 700 by 1,000 kilometers. No one really knows why it's there. The underground rocks are ancient, billions of years old, and the crust around it is uneven which might be part of the reason for the strange magnetic behavior. As for how it formed, there are two main ideas. One is that a huge blob of rock pushed up from deep under the Earth, messing with the magnetic field above. The other is that a giant meteorite slammed into the area hundreds of millions of years ago. The impact would have smashed and rearranged the rocks below, possibly creating pockets of magnetic material that mess with the field above. Deep beneath northeastern China, way down in the mantle, between about 700 and 1400 kilometers under the surface, scientists have found something strange called the Beijing Anomaly. Basically seismic waves, vibrations from earthquakes that normally travel through the Earth slow down a lot in this area, which is unusual. Researchers Jesse Lawrence and Michael Wysession think the reason might be water trapped deep in the mantle. Even a tiny amount of water down there, like a fraction of a percent, can really affect how these waves move, causing them to lose energy and slow down. The Beijing anomaly covers a huge area, so there must be a process spreading this water throughout the mantle. One idea is that water gets dragged deep into the earth by ocean floors as they slowly slide under the continents. The middle of these sinking slabs stays cool, so the water doesn't evaporate, even under extreme heat and pressure. And over time, some of that water seeps out into the surrounding mantle, making pockets that are wetter and softer than normal. Just the top layer of these sinking slabs is enough to explain all the weird seismic readings. Next up is the Kursk Magnetic Anomaly in southwestern Russia, near the Ukrainian border. This area is so magnetically charged that it messes with compasses, 
Some say it's like Earth's third magnetic pole. This is the largest magnetic anomaly on Earth. It spans nearly 50,000 square miles. It contains more than 30 billion tons of iron ore. Some estimates say it holds close to 50% of the Earth's total iron ore reserves. The magnetic weirdness is thanks to that iron ore. It's so magnetic that it distorts Earth's magnetic field above it. The Kursk magnetic anomaly was first discovered in 1773 by a Russian astronomer, but it wasn't until 1883 that the connection between the anomaly and the iron ore deposits was made. But if you're ever in the area though, and your compass starts acting up, you'll know why. Under the North Sea, not far from Britain, lies a buried mystery called the Silver Pit Crater. It's about 20 kilometers across and looks a lot like a classic impact crater, which is why when it was first noticed in seismic data, some scientists thought a meteorite had smashed into the sea floor millions of years ago. If it was a space rock, it would have been 120 meters or just under 400 feet wide. The crater was spotted by geologists Simon Stewart and Philip Allen, who noticed unusual rings in the seismic scans. Stewart thought it could be a meteor, and the idea quickly made headlines in 2002 as potentially the first confirmed impact near Britain. I've been your host, James, and I will catch you, yes, you specifically, next time.